uh, my grandparents, you know, were massacred by the by the Turkish, and then um, my father ended up escaping when he was just a child. His uncle grabbed him, ran out of the house, and his parents were massacred. This week on the Trailblazers, we have the new general manager for the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel, Mr. Zevan Yeralian, who has quite a phenomenal story. A man of Armenian descent who grew up in war-torn Lebanon and seeing his grandparents massacred. Moving to the United States, later on becoming a professional football player and a coach in the NFL, and then later on becoming an astute businessman in the hospitality sector. He of course is now here in Jamaica, serving at one of the island's premier hotels. You have to stay tuned for this phenomenal story. Hey everyone, I am Tamara McHale, host of the Trailblazers series. Remember to click the notification bell right below, subscribe, like, comment, and share. I took a 75% beautiful black X5 to drive in a Tita, a second time. And Oprah grabbed my hand. She was like, all right, you know, Show One me. thing that I learned from Steve Harvey's office bar, I remember he had gotten fired from that particular radio station. If you don't get single-minded and push certain things, they never get accomplished. Yes, you have to be resolute in your purpose. That is That's right. And you have to put a timeline on it. That must be done by. So I'm delighted to be joined with the new general manager of Jamaica Pegasus. Well, relatively new. He's been here like three months now. And it's Mr. Zevan Yeralian. And he has quite an interesting story. Welcome to the Trailblazers. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. It's uh, good to be here. And uh, it's been uh, uh, fun and interesting uh, so far the first three months. Mm -hmm. I can imagine, especially joining as a general manager during the middle of a mm -hmm. global pandemic. Well, it's a challenge. Let's, let's put it that way. It's, you know, the whole world has changed and uh, the hospitality business, hotel, travel business has completely, completely changed. And mm -hmm. we have to take the precautions that we need to take to be safe, uh, not only for our staff, but also for all our guests that come here. Mm -hmm. So there has been a lot of changes and, um, you know, some of it has been positive. Some of it has been negative because of uh, the travel and we don't have that many people traveling these days and hopefully everything goes back to normal here in the next few months and we'll see what happens. We'll definitely see what happens and mm -hmm. I'll pick up some more later on in the interview about some tips regarding the hospitality sure. industry during the pandemic but mm -hmm. I want to zoom in a bit on you because when mm -hmm. I heard your story I was like how is he in the hospitality industry so for our viewers so, Mr. Uralian or Zevan, or I like to call you Mr. Z, and That's you say your staff call you Mr. Z. So, we'll call you Mr. Yes. Z. So, you are from Armenia and you grew up in Lebanon. Tell us about that. Well, I'm uh, Armenian descent. I speak Armenian. Uh, I grew up in um, Syria and Lebanon mm -hmm. and, uh, and came to this country. Well, actually, came to the United States at the age of 10. Um, the reason was really uh, my grandparents, you know, were massacred by the by the Turkish, and then um, my father ended up escaping when he was just a child. His uncle grabbed him, ran out of the house, and his parents were massacred. And then uh, he came to uh, in a small village, Armenian village in uh, in uh, Syria and Lebanon. And I grew up in a farm, and then went to a private school in Lebanon, an Armenian Christian private school, and then. Uh, when things got really bad in, um, in Lebanon, when there was a civil war going on, uh, actually between the Christians and the Arabs, and my brothers almost got killed uh, during that time. So my parents said enough was enough. And um, uh, it took us eight years to come to the United States. And uh, my sister first came um, to the United States, and then um, my father came, and then the rest of the family ended up coming. So we ended up in, uh, in Los Angeles, California. Wow. So, I mean, how was that for you, though, especially those early years in the middle of a war, your grandparents massacred? What kind of toll did it take on you as a, a young child? Well, it, it's about survival. And at that time, it was all about survival and making sure that you can, you know, uh, be ready for the next day. Uh, you know, there was uh, eight of us in the family and we lived in a two bedroom uh, apartment. 
And, uh, but you know what, we didn't know anything different and we didn't know what it was like to, uh, owning a home or being able to uh, live uh, you know, in a normal lifestyle until we really came to this country. And um, when we came to this country, you know, my parents landed with uh, not a penny to their name, but they went to work right away. My father was a carpenter, uh, my mother was a cook. And so we ended up, uh, you know, surviving uh, by doing little things here and there. At the age of um, 13, I lied about my age, and uh, so I could work at a liquor store. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so they thought the owner knew I wasn't 18 or 21 for sure. So I ended up working at the age of 13 at a liquor store, and then um, I got held up three times at gunpoint. But it was, uh, you know, I, I grew up in, in the city in Los Angeles, right in the middle of Watts and I didn't know a word of English. So it was a tough time. So the only way out for me was sports and I loved sports. And we went from, uh, um, from Los Angeles, we moved to Inglewood. Inglewood and I went to Inglewood High School and uh, that's where I started playing football, track. And uh, went from, uh, from that to University of Nebraska. I had a full scholarship to University of Nebraska playing football. And then from uh, University of Nebraska, went to the pros, uh, a little bit of Green Bay, and I played at Philadelphia. And then I coached in college for a long time, for uh, over 10, 15 years. Isn't that amazing though? So this young boy that grew up in poverty pretty much, and then moved to the United States, going through those different challenges, mm -hmm. but sports saved you. And then as you mentioned, you, you played pro. What was that experience for you? Well, it wasn't long. It was only two years. I had a, a back injury and I ended up uh, having a back operation. I had three ruptured discs. So my career was short. And so what I ended up doing was coaching. And I started coaching college uh, football. Uh, went from, uh, oh gosh, Washington State University to University of Missouri. Then I was defensive coordinator for the Florida Gators and then uh, University of Colorado. Um, and, uh, and then I went to the Chicago Bears with Mike Ditka and then uh, New York Giants with Dan Reeves and then uh, uh, New Orleans Saints and Denver Broncos. So, you know, put, put it mildly, I really had the American dream. Uh, I really did. I, 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 I've done it all. Uh, you know, I, I don't have any, uh, I, I don't uh, regret anything that, I, that I've really done. Um, and uh, I enjoyed it. it was, it's been a great adventure and uh, it still is. An adventure indeed because you, you know, you men mentioned some big football <laughs> names just now, Giants and everything like right. that. So, I mean, coaching in the NFL, I'm trying to figure then, how did you make the transition now? Because then you went into business and hospitality. Tell us about that. Well, that part of it uh, came in a way of, well, I tried to put a group together and to purchase the Minnesota Vikings from Red McCombs and uh, that fell through. When that fell through, uh, we, I, I needed cash flow. So what I ended up doing is was um, I uh, ended up, um, uh, I owned a restaurant. Next thing I knew is I owned two. Next thing I know is next, I ended up with five restaurants. Uh, so, you know, having the restaurants, uh, learning about the restaurant business. And the one thing I don't want to do again is own five restaurants. <laughs> Why? I learned that because you work seven days a week uh -oh. and you have to know every aspect of the restaurant business, uh, cost control, labor, food cost, paper cost, or else you will, you know, yes. uh, you will not make it. Mm -hmm. So I ended up selling the restaurants and um, next thing I know is I ended up uh, managing uh, hotels, resorts, and I love that part of it. And I owned my own uh, golf resort in, um, in Colorado. And uh, it was a beautiful resort in Colorado in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was fun, exciting. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was part of uh, the adventure. And then from there, I, I worked in Belize, uh, worked in the Caribbean islands, um, in uh, St. John's, and then also uh, uh, Grand Cayman. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and now in Jamaica. Indeed, and now you're in Jamaica, and it makes uh -huh. a perfect segue because now you have that experience. This is your first time visiting Jamaica or living in Jamaica, I should say. Well, living in Jamaica, yes. I've visited Jamaica before, and okay. I really love Jamaica. I, I love the people. I love the culture mm -hmm. and uh, everything about it. Mm -hmm. As soon as I start learning to saying yes, man, and uh, it'll be, I'll, I'll be part of it. <laughs> but I do. I love everything about the. I love everything about the Jamaicans and. 
I just need to get out more and explore more mm -hmm. and uh, get to, to know all of Jamaica. And you certainly will. I certainly will. But uh, right now, my job really uh, keeps me here and uh, working for uh, Mr. Hendrickson and uh, Jamaica Pegasus. I really, really enjoy. I enjoy the team that we have here and following the footsteps actually of uh, Mr. Mr. Peter Hillary, Hillary and th those are big shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. And he knew everybody. I mean, he's like the mayor of uh, Jamaica here. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm taking it day by day and learning and, um, and uh, moving forward. Okay. And as you rightly mentioned, Mr. Hillary was a phenomenal man. Mm -hmm. We actually had him on the Trailblazers as yes. well. So, you know, are there any May any changes that you plan to bring that you can share publicly to the to the hotel? Well, we have to change a, a little bit here and there because of the the COVID nineteen and uh, you know everybody has suffered and our occupancy has gone down. Of course, just like everybody else's has gone down. So we you have to come up with new ideas, mm -hmm. and we are changing our our menu. We're coming up with a new menu mm -hmm. and a, a more simpler menu and more healthier menu. Mm -hmm. That's going to be coming out in the next couple of days. Well, actually a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing that we're really doing is um, we're, um, we've designated a whole floor on the 10th floor where we're doing a co-working station and it's going to be offices where we can have uh, business people that want to have a safe uh, atmosphere where they can come in and have meetings and be able to say, you know, we have an area where we could meet in a nice suite and we have a concierge level where they can order anything they want and it'll be in their room when they visit and they can have meetings set up. They can rent them for four hours, they can rent them for eight hours, or they can rent them all day long, or they can rent them for a week. And the other thing we're also doing is that uh, we're beginning to sell uh, the rooms weekly and monthly basis. And that's working out really well. We're getting uh, more and more guests that want to stay uh, longer visits where they can stay for a week. And, you know, who, who doesn't want to live like a rock star and <laughs> live in the hotel and uh, be able to stay here for a week, a month and enjoy all the facilities, the pool, the tennis, the restaurants? Awesome. Mm -hmm. I like what you're doing. And I mean... I like the fact that you are pivoting, especially in the face of this global pandemic. And that's something that a lot of businesses, whether small, medium or large enterprises are having mm -hmm. to do. So how critical is it? You know, perhaps maybe you can share one or two tips to pivot um, within the midst of a pandemic. Well, you have to be able to pivot. If you don't change, if you just stick to your old ways and you don't learn something new or do something different, then you're going to fall behind. And that's the one thing about the hospitality business. If, if you don't keep up with the trends, if you don't keep up with the new ideas that are coming out, you will fall behind. And actually, Mr. Hendrickson does a great job of that himself. And then we have a great team here of marketing and sales that are putting packages together for all of this that I, I mentioned, the offices, the long stay and being able to uh, move forward during the you know, COVID-19 period. Mm -hmm. And if, if you don't change, you will fall behind. And uh, I think uh, you know, the things that we are doing right now will not only help the guests that are coming in and being able to say that we are in a safe atmosphere here at uh, Jamaica Pegasus because we are taking every precaution that's possible. And uh, including as you walk in, the first thing is being able to take your temperature and sanitizing and uh, the way we're treating uh, all our guests in the restaurant where they have to be seven, eight feet apart and keeping the masks on not only the guests, but also the employees. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I like something that you just said, if you don't change, you will fall behind. And that mm -hmm. is definitely so crucial, not only in business, but really and truly in life. Mm -hmm. And just zooming even a bit more, getting some life lessons from your personal story, because having gone through major difficulties and, you know, a successful businessman, mm -hmm. a successful GM, uh, you rose from poverty and, you know, you are now a success. So what kind of advice would you want to share to our viewers? who are feeling inspired right now by your story to say, how do they change or how do they transform their lives mm -hmm. despite the challenges they may be experiencing? Well, the one thing I will say is to uh, anybody that's listening is really don't ever give up on your hope and your dream. 
you know, if I can make it, if I can have the dream that I've had, uh, being able to, um, you know, coach in the NFL, be able to play uh, in college and NFL, to be on a championship team, to have a ring, uh, all of that, you can do it, but you have to stick with it. And it's not easy. You have to work hard. And I enjoy working. I really, I love working. I work, you know, seven days a week a lot, a lot of times. I'm here all the time. And, uh, you know, even our owner says, you need to take a day off. You need to go and enjoy life a little bit. And I, I do. And uh, it's, been, um, it's been very interesting driving here, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> driving is a little bit different in Kingston. Uh, but, uh, again, uh, to me, the young kids that are growing up here, in, even in Jamaica, in the poverty, don't give up on your dreams. Work hard and always try to get to the next step. And if you have a dream of getting to the top, stick to it and have a plan. To me, you have to have a plan. Uh, you know, whatever we can do, we will do. And uh, Mr. Hendrickson has been great about not closing the hotel down at all. Uh, he's one of the few that has kept it open during the whole time. And I applaud him for it. And, uh, and, and to me, he's really done a great job of taking care of his people. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And we applaud him as well for that. All right. So taking one or two life lessons again from your story, because we are winding down. Mm -hmm. But um, again, it speaks to your resilience. Perhaps you want to share three tips that are key, you know, from your own experience to become a success in, in life. Well, first of all, I, you know, believe in, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, pluses in, in teamwork and use your resources, use your resources to get ahead. You know, right now networking is big. You have to stay networking and being able to use uh, your friends, business associates to, to move forward. Mm -hmm. And the, the other thing is I've always believed in, in three things. It, even when I was in coaching and playing and in business, always figure out who are you, where are we going, and how are we gonna get there? Again, who, who are we, where are we going, and how are we gonna get there? So to me, you identify, you know, the person you are or the team you are or the business you are. Okay, let's say we're the Jamaica Pegasus. Okay, where are we going? Well, we want to get back to what Jamaica Pegasus was and do it better. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to strive. And then uh, my job is to help them get there. Mm -hmm. And I really believe uh, right now is being able to bring everybody together, mm -hmm. have great uh, teamwork, and do it all together because not one person can do it by themselves. It has to have a, you have to have a whole team. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Have you been back to Lebanon? I have not been back to Lebanon. Everybody in my family has except me. And I need to make the time. I really, I need to make the time because it's really not a, the safest place in the world right now. It, it isn't. It really isn't. Um, yeah. But um, I think uh, I, I probably will one of these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd rather, you know, I'd, I'd like to go to Lebanon, I'd like to go to Armenia, but neither one of them is safe right now. There's, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty and, um, uh, you know, mm -hmm. turbulence going on right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, my final question for you is, what's next for you? I mean, I know you're doing this, but in terms of, you know, what's your vision? You know, are you, do you just live in the moment kind of person or, you know, or do you have... A structure to say okay I'm gonna be doing this for 10 years or five years and then I'm gonna retire and relax in the mountains <laughs> well I, I don't know about retiring uh, I'm not I'm not good about uh, retiring uh, <laughs> I, I retired once for one month <laughs> I did I, re I retired once uh, for a month or so and then I got bored you I, got bored. <laughs> I got bored I got bored of uh, playing golf and uh, when you're not good at it and even though I owned a golf course mm -hmm. uh, at one time uh, so I have to work. I really do. I, to me, I have to have a purpose. Mm -hmm. And um, I also want to, you know, uh, spend a little bit more time with my family. I've got uh, two uh, grandkids, beautiful grandkids that I want to see mm -hmm. and be able to see them more often. Mm -hmm. But I love adventures and I love challenges. And right now, this is both an adventure and a mm -hmm. challenge. And I actually said it was my last question, but my last, last question, because you just mentioned you have to have a purpose. And I think that's a fitting note for mm -hmm. us to end this interview on. How critical is it for our viewers and just everyone in general to know what their purpose is and to go after that? Mm -hmm. Well, to, to me, in, in life, uh, in general, in life, you know, I, I believe in core values. 
You know, I, I believe in uh, values of, you know, the, the loyalty. I believe in accountability because everybody's accountable. And to me, I think if you don't have these core values in life, situate in your, you know, system where if you haven't grown up with it, and um, to me, you, you have to have them to be able to have them and then to move forward and to have a purpose. All of it comes together. And I think if you put it all together, things will fall, you know, fall in place for you. You work hard, you have your core values, you do the right things, it'll fall in place for you. It will fall in place. Mm -hmm. you know what your core values are and stick to it. Thank you so much, Mr. Z. It has You're been welcome. a pleasure. It was a pleasure. And we wish you all the best. Well, thank this you. new adventure of your life. And mm -hmm. we know you will do amazing things. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. It was, it's been fun. Thank you. And that, of course, is our interview with Mr. Zevan Yerali and Mr. Z, the new general manager for Jamaica Pegasus and a trailblazer. Thank you for tuning in.